And we need to do some research. Remember, I told you a while ago that the Bible is a human book? And the Bible is a divine book? So what does it imply? It implies this. Since the Bible is a human book, we have to approach it grammatically. We have to look on the subjects, the nouns, the verbs, the pronouns, the adjectives. How is that, how is that ver verb, uh, verse being described? We just simply don't read it just like, you know, like a shadow on the, on, 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 okay, I just read the Bible, that's it. No, we have to fully scrutinize it. Diba? Sabi, we, we also have to look at it historically. When was this scripture written? It just, you know, like what I said, the Bible was written how many years? 1,500 years. So during the 1,500 years, so many things have already happened. And so many things happened during the time that it was written. So we need to understand what is happening during that time when this thing is being written. Because somehow, somewhere, some way or the other, it affects the way the message is being conveyed. So we need to approach the Bible historically. When you read it, sino bang sumulan ito? Who wrote this? And when did he wrote this? And to whom he wrote this? Do you get my point? Right? Thirdly, we have to understand that since this is a human book, cultural and tradition have an effect to that writer. Though the writer is still inspired by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit doesn't uh, control what the circumstance of that writer. And the most importantly, we have to approach the Bible contextually. You know, a lot of cults, culto, okay? They have been arising. Why? Because they interpret the Bible in a wrong context. Maling contexto. They have applied it in the wrong uh, application. I'm not going to mention them one by one. And then, of course, we have to approach the Bible literally. You know, sometimes there are words we have to understand, is this literal or is this symbolic? Right? There are so many symbolic uh, scripture or description in the Bible, so we need to understand whether it is descriptive or it is prescriptive. And, of course, logically, you know, there are some things that we have to understand through our human logic. We approach the Bible as a, 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 as a human book because, through this. And then we approach the Bible as a divine book through this. What is it? Number one, since it is a divine book, it means it's inerrant, meaning there is no error in it. Uh, it is authoritative. God is the ultimate author of the book. It is united. When you say united, it means it doesn't contradict. Sometimes people will question you. Oh, look at your Bible. Uh, the Bible is contradicting. Uh, on, 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 on one chapter, it says 4,000 4, men have been feed. You know? And on, 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 on the other chapter, 5,000 has been feed. Oh, but you have to understand, those are two different scenarios. Right? So we ha it doesn't contradict. It doesn't contradict. Oh, sabi sa Bible, you know, you have to submit. Oh, sabi sa Bible, you have to love. Oh, there's no contradiction on that. Right? We have to find a way to put everything that we read, make sure that it is harmonious to the entire book. And of course, lastly, we have to approach it in a form with mystery because it is a divine book. We cannot comprehend the, the mind of God. Right? We, but God has given us some of the important ones. Okay, and my last point. So what's my first point? Receive the word. My second point, reflect the word. Right? We have to reflect it. And lastly, James, do not merely listen to the words and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. Not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it. They will be blessed 
in what they do. I like this word. They will be blessed. Sino sa inyo ang gusto mo bless? Amen. Okay, so let's, what, 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 is, what is the third point? We have to receive, we have to reflect, and the third point is to respond to God's word. Okay? How should we respond? We have to take it. Sabi doon, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. What, what is the instruction? Take it. Who among you are taking the sword of the spirit? And let me give you a few things that I observed here before I jump into my conclusion. Sabi doon, the sword of the spirit. Diba? The sword of the spirit is the word of God. Right? Secondly, the sword of the spirit is the only offense tool provided. If we're going to read Ephesians, you know, the helmet, the, the breastplate, everything is in defense. To protect you. But only the sword of the Spirit was given for us for, un for offensive. Who among you are using your sword? O baka naman yung iba sa atin kinakalawang na yung sword. You know, our sword is already rusty. And look at this. And this is one thing that I would like you to take. The sword of the Spirit is the sword of the Spirit. Do you get me? The sword of the Spirit, it is the Spirit sword. If it was only being borrowed to us. Right? Ano ba yung oras? Okay. Tapos na ako. The sword of the Spirit is the sword of the Spirit. It belongs to the Holy Spirit. And it is a privilege for each one of us that God is allowing you to use that tool. But no one is using it. And that's the problem. Because if we are honest to ourselves, if we are using the sword of the Spirit, then we will be blessed. Well, probably, maybe, hindi ba sa atin ang gagawin? Magbago sa sakin yan, magbago, bahay, bago, ba? So, that's a good thing. But what I'm basically saying is that we have to understand that the Word of God is the sword of the Spirit. How important is that to you? It is not just only, you know, like something that you could use. It was used by the Spirit Himself, right? And it just simply borrowed to us. And then, sabi ko dito, take it, right? And number, itong pangalawa, sabi dito, I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. We have to store it. Now, the devil misquote the scripture. Remember? He, even the devil knows the scripture, but he misquote it, Okay? But if we memorize the Word of God in context, we will have a storehouse of powerful weapons to defend us against temptation and test us and help us through our severe trials and tribulation. So, the, the, the psalmist said, we have to store it up because we certainly need it. Store it. Job, Job 23 verse 12, treasure it. I have not departed from the commandments of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my portion of food. So that's how uh, Job treasured God's word. And lastly, use it. All scripture is, is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. Right? You know, come to think of it, okay, let me, let me uh, tickle your, your, your brain a bit here. You know, we might like worship. Who likes worship? You know, who likes singing here? Everyone likes singing, especially, you know. We might like preaching. How long you like preaching? I like preaching. How do you like preaching? You know, but the only perfect part of worship service is the reading of God's Word. 
because it is the only thing perfect. Right? All my statements will be gone, forgotten. All our songs will, will fade away. But the word of God will last forever. Right? Walang forever. Sabi nga ni Ben, yung love life minsan madalas walang forever. But the word of God, meron. Ben, nakalagay yun sa album ito. That's true. Diba? Yeah? Yung love life minsan or madalas walang forever. But the word of God, meron. Let me now, let me now go to my conclusion and my challenge. If we come to church with an intention only listening and without the intention of being changed, then we are all missing the point. Kung, kung pumunta lang kayo dito, if you come here just to listen and be enjoyed by the, by the song, by the preaching, then you are missing the point. I'm not going to invite you next time. Okay? But of course, you are all welcome. Nowadays, it's sad to know that a lot of people come to church walk in, read the word, hear the word, and walk out with no intention of changing. You know, I just hope and pray that our church will be known to people that this is the church who does the word. Practice what everybody else just talked about. James says, if we wanted to be blessed, we got to live the word of God. Not just hear it, not just know it, but doing it. The question on the floor now is, what are we going to do now with what we already know? Now, we know the importance of the word. Pastor Lino has mentioned that already. And I have given you some ideas how we could enjoy it. question is, the invitation is open. Enjoy your Bible. Let's come to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, once again, we would like to thank you for giving us your message, Lord. Lord, uh, first and foremost, we'd like to ask for your forgiveness if there are times or there are many times that we neglect for God the importance of receiving reflecting and responding to your word. Lord, help us to enjoy it in order for us to benefit from it. Thank you, Lord God, for the wisdom. Thank you, Lord God, for the knowledge. And thank you, Lord God, for all the insight on how we could approach your word in our life. Lord, uh, as we end this preaching, as we end this message, Lord God, we pray, Lord God, that uh, this word that we have heard today uh, will never be forgotten. Truly, Lord God, that uh, we have limited capacity in our brain. But we ask, O oh Lord, that as we go home, we will always uh, have the message that we have given each one of us. And we could use it to channel the blessing for others. We commit to you, Lord God, the rest of the day. In Jesus' name. Amen.